I have a new video for you guys because today we are exposing the bizarre relationship between Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. For whatever reason, Nickelodeon has put Dan Schneider on this pedestal and they continue to promote his work and push his shows harder than any other show on the network. So today we're going to talk about what has been going on with Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and get into it. <music> As you guys know, we've been talking a ton about Dan Schneider on my channel because there is just so much to get into and Nickelodeon gave him the opportunity to do whatever he wanted. So during this time, I don't know what favoritism was going on, but they obviously loved the adult content that Dan Schneider was writing into his television shows, making his actors and actresses do inappropriate things on camera to fulfill his own fantasies or the sick fantasies of these Nickelodeon execs. And in in today's video, I want to walk through how Nickelodeon favored Dan Schneider's content over all the other shows at the network. So why would they put him on a pedestal when he's creating content that's obviously inappropriate for young minds? Maybe because Nickelodeon wanted to grow. Us. I mean, they wanted to send these subliminal messages to children that only adult eyes can really see this because they want to normalize it. That's honestly a whole other conversation. But today, I'm going to show you guys how Nickelodeon definitely favored Dan and how it's really questionable because what was Nickelodeon's intentions? Like, were they trying to um, soil our innocent minds? I don't really know. But I'm pulling a ton of research from this thread from Obscure Nickelodeon. They are a Twitter account on Twitter. Twitter and you should definitely go check them out because it's a safe space for people to come forward and speak about their own experiences at Nick and this account does a lot of research on Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider. They are lovely. I love talking to her. We are friends and I want to give her a shout out and give her credit because she put a lot of work into this research. So let's go ahead and talk about what was going on at Nickelodeon like 30 years ago. Let's take it way back. So between the 80s until 1996, Geraldine Laybourne was writing Nickelodeon and she brought in a variety of television shows to the network. At this point, Nickelodeon was very diverse. They had a variety of television shows and Geraldine really paved the network to be known as the best kids network out there. Here's a screenshot of the schedule from summer 1991. And as you guys can see, there are a ton of different shows that were um, being shown at that time. It's like, it's crazy to think because nowadays I feel like there are like six shows that they play and this one had a variety variety. We really grew up on so many different cartoons. I mean, I wasn't alive at this point, but like those who are older than me grew up on these. But in summer 1991, most of the programs were only being repeated once a day. And these shows included a variety of creators. So there were a lot of different faces, a lot of different stories. Nickelodeon was the it channel at that time. But then a few years later comes 1994 and Dan Schneider starts working at Nickelodeon. At that point, he was just an employee, but he got his own show in 1999. And ever since then, he has thrived at Nickelodeon. Now let's fast forward 20 years, and we're in 2012 when Dan Schneider is thriving. And obviously the schedule looks a lot different than the one from 1991. On this weekly schedule, you can see there's a lot of Drake and Josh, iCarly, Victorious, back to back, repeating, repeating, repeating. So much SpongeBob too. Thank God he's not related. But there are still some really gross moments in Spongebob, so maybe we could talk about that one day? I don't know. And here's another schedule. You can see even more iCarly, Drake and Josh, etc. And keep in mind, guys, during this time, 2010, 2012, these shows have been done for years now. So why is Nickelodeon continuing to replay these shows from Dan Schneider over and over and over again with the most repetitive TV schedule I've ever seen? Like, if I was a child watching this, I would be extremely bored. I mean, I guess they're probably marathons, but still, the, just the lack of diversity. So much Dan Schneider, I just, I, I cannot handle it. But during this time that they were playing Dan over and over, over and over again, they had a bunch of other shows that they just haven't been playing. They still had new episodes to roll out on shows like True Jackson VP, The Troop, Big Time Rush, 
Supa Ninjas, Bucket and Skinners, How to Rock, Marvin Marvin. I don't even know some of these shows at all, but these were going on at Nickelodeon while Dan Schneider was playing on all of the TV programs. Like why even create these other shows if you're just going to promote and air Dan Schneider's work? The only other Nickelodeon show that got adequate promoting and attention from the network was probably Big Time Rush, which I have my own theory. I feel like it's a boy band, like girls just love that. I mean, the music Music sales went through the roof. They peaked at number three on the chart at one point for BTR. They sold 67,000 copies in the first week for their debut album. Comparing that to the Victorious soundtrack, that debut album sold 40,000 copies in its first week and it charted at number five. So I kind of feel like Big Time Rush was just kind of an odd one out because they had successful music, it was just a likable show, and it wasn't a Dan Schneider production, but Nickelodeon did promote it because of how well it did with album sales and such. Other shows that did not do that well on the music charts didn't get any promotion unless they had Dan Schneider behind them. Nickelodeon had many, many, many other shows. It's not just Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, iCarly, etc. You probably only know about these ones because they were promoted so well. But most of these other shows would only have one or two seasons at most. Some of them didn't even finish their original airing on Nickelodeon. The remaining episodes were burnt out on Teen Nick or other Nicktoons and small marathons with zero promotion. Those shows include Bucket and Skinner, The Troop, Star Falls, and Hunter Street, which if you don't know any of those, honestly, I don't either. And there's a reason why why? Because they didn't include the disgusting things that, you know, Dan Schneider would. They didn't have a ton of feet and, you know, kids doing really embarrassing things. Keep in mind, guys, that, like, Dan Schneider was so just manipulative on set. Like, I can get into detail sometime, but, like, he, if he didn't like you, he would write you in a certain way to make you do something humiliating on camera, and it would, like, you know, fulfill his fantasy, but also give him revenge for whatever reason he would be beefing with the young girls because his relationship with them was extremely inappropriate. But the only other time that these shows would ever get promotion was if it was combined with the Dan Schneider show. Like honestly, True Jackson was so screwed over because I feel like that show would have done really well. I mean, it did all right, but if you compare it to iCarly, it definitely did not get the same treatment. Like in this promo, for example, that you guys can see, iCarly is all over it and True Jackson is just mentioned at the very end because it's just a little like filler honestly most of these little mentions of other shows are just filler then True Jackson rocks with an all new episode guest starring pop star Fifi Dobson so be here for a night of premieres Saturday night starting at 8 only on Nick Here's an example of a Halloween ad for iCarly. They made this full advertisement for the television marathon of iCarly with spooky things going on. And pretty much this ad was later edited to include other shows, but here's the original ad. Right now! You heard him! <laughs> a brand new iCarly special kicks off a night of Halloween premieres. Saturday night, starting at 8. So, of course, that's fully promoting Dan Schneider's show, iCarly, and whatever. It's the commercial. Well, there's another version of this commercial where they added in other shows like SpongeBob and How I Rock and other things like that. And it's obviously kind of dirty to those shows that they would just sneak them in sometimes for filler, I guess. But they would never give them their own promo. Why is there this favoritism towards Dan Schneider? I'm celebrating. Don't miss a brand new How to Rock. That's frighteningly funny. No! <laughs> Sorry, thunder makes me fart. Plus, all day long, catch the most spectacular episodes of your favorite shows. <laughs> so be here for Halloween next Saturday, starting at 1. By Nickelodeon not giving these television shows adequate promotion, they in turn got really bad ratings on them. This is why the shows would never do well in ratings. Nickelodeon would give up on them after the first episode and would stop promoting the show. Unless they had a one hour special, but even that, it was minimal. So why did Nickelodeon just drop off these other shows? Maybe they couldn't afford them because Dan Schneider was really expensive and demanded a lot of Nickelodeon's resources. 
like I said, Dan Schneider did true Jackson VP so dirty, like so dirty. The series finale of the show was titled Mystery in Peru, and it never got a promo. The stars themselves had to go and promote it on social media and through clever TV because no one else was going to be talking about it. Hey guys, hanging out on set at True Jackson VP with Ashley Argoda. And another promo from Nickelodeon, they did another show dirty. You guys may have heard of Bucket and Skinner, but pretty much Jeanette McCurdy was on several TV shows, as you guys know. And there was a marathon moment where she was going to be on iCarly, she was going to be on another show, and then at the end, they promoted Bucket and Skinner. And that's only because someone from Dan Schneider's team, his clique, was going to be on that show. So why are they so obsessed with Dan Schneider's characters and just his shows in general? Because these shows like Bucket and Skinner never get the justice they deserve. Brand new, one hour Bucket and Skinner. Who's ready to get that crazy? Y'all. It's just me all night long. Well, yeah, it's me and you guys, because you're all invited too. It's a lot more fun that way. Don't miss Just Jeanette Night next Saturday starting at 8. So like I was saying, Nickelodeon is throwing away shows. They're doing a couple episodes and then just acting like the show never existed, which must have sucked for the actors. But one show in particular was being called out by fans because they knew that their favorite TV show was not getting the right treatment. I mean, Nickelodeon threw away these shows so quickly that the fan base of Bucket and Skinner were so upset with the mistreatment of the show by the network that they started a trend called hashtag give Bucket and Skinner a billboard that became a worldwide trending topic. The fans were extremely determined to get that recognition for this show because they recognized that Nickelodeon was just acting like it did not exist, especially when they had like great talented writers create like a wonderful show and they decided to put all their money towards like iCarly where literally the people who work on the set don't even enjoy working on that show. Because it was like people were coming at me constantly for a thing that I was ashamed to be a part of. Of. Um, you know, I was on a show that I thought was trash. Like I just did. I just thought this is so, this is so bad. I don't want to go onto this overlit kids show set and like scream my lines and just like, whoa, Carly, like everything just felt just so ridiculous. So with all this pressure around this show and it was trending online, Nickelodeon had no choice but to air new episodes on the network due to the attention it was getting online. So they went through and they gave the justice that Bucket and Skinner deserved, but it took a bunch of fans calling them out to do so. A former Nickelodeon actress, Ashley Argoda, has actually spoken out about her experiences working at Nickelodeon, and she was on two of these throwaway shows, True Jackson VP and Bucket and Skinner, the show of the day. But pretty much she opened up in her podcast with one of her former castmates, Dylan Lane, about how they were asked by the crew to go go on social media and promote their shows because Nickelodeon wasn't doing their own job. Would you, when, what's the closest you've come to quitting besides just like every day? <laughs> Probably the, that time we're talking about post Bucket and Skinner, those yeah. first few years. Yeah. Cause I thought, because again, it was, it, that was like my introduction in yeah. so many ways to this world. But at the time I was thinking to myself, like fuck, rationally, this may have been a fluke. And so I think then, back then, I had no money. I was living in a shit apartment. I wasn't working. I was just not happy, you know? And so I think that was probably the closest I got to quitting. Yeah, it was a tough time for, for all of us, especially with, <laughs> ha with how it happened. It was, yeah. It was, a, it was an open wound for, for quite some time. Yeah, and we were young people too. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of rejection to face as a young person. Yeah. We were, it is. Like, we're we were, so I turned 18 on that show. Like we were, yeah. we were babies when it happened. So it was, and it was so weird for me too, because in the short time that we were all together, you guys had become like my little brothers. And I remember, especially towards the end of filming, I could, I could sort of see it happening, but I was like, they're not gonna, like, they're going to give us a chance. It's going to be fine. And then as it just got worse and worse, it just, like, I, I wanted to, like, mama bear hug and protect all of you. But I was, like, I, it was so weird. It was so helpless because it was our show, technically. But, like, yeah. there was only so much we could do to help save it or to, to help keep it on the air or to Absolutely. put it out there. 
And I feel like we did that. I mean, we started like a, a riot on Twitter at one point. Do you remember that? Do you remember when I yeah, took you guys to the Grove so that we could that. do promos like for our own show? Say that again? Do you remember when I took you guys to the Grove so that we could film promos for our own show? Oh my God. Now I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just remember, you know, our slot kept getting pushed. Yeah. You know, we had whatever day at whatever time. And yeah. It was supposed to be a good day at a good time. I don't know. I don't study that stuff. And then slowly over time, it's getting pushed and you're getting played in the middle of the night. And then they're saying, well, your numbers aren't good. And it's like, well, because the slot's terrible. Yeah. Like, well, the slot's not good because your numbers aren't good. It, you know, snake eating its tail kind of thing. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, I remember a bunch of billboards started popping up for all these other shows that they were promoting. And they were putting all this money into these other shows. And that really upset me. Yeah. And it, it really upset Taylor, too, if I can speak on his behalf about yeah. this one thing. And we sort of organized a mutiny and we got on Twitter and we started hashtagging like Bucket and Skinner deserve a billboard. It and we was got it trending. The best thing ever. <laughs> and we got phone calls from Nickelodeon like, you can't do this. Like, you know, we were they like, were not happy about that at all. We can, though. And we did. But yeah, I mean, we did it. I mean, we raised more awareness through that than I think they ever did from their advertising. Yeah. We I, were, I don't know. We were so adamant and, and persistent in in promoting the show even when we didn't have any help and it's weird because looking back on it like in the moment it felt so helpless because I was like just throwing at the wall and seeing what was gonna hopefully stick but now I mean like we I can look back and say like we really did we did everything we could Another one of Nickelodeon's throwaway shows was How to Rock, and this show was canceled in 2012, and David Israeli, the showrunner, went to Tumblr to share his thoughts about Nickelodeon. In his post, he wrote, Why isn't the show coming back? There is no simple answer. Nickelodeon is going through a transition right now. But you would think if Nickelodeon is going through a transitional phase that they would want to have more shows out there and they wouldn't be canceling shows. They would want to promote what they already have worked on. The reason why these throwaway shows couldn't get the same ratings as iCarly or Victorious was because they weren't marketed properly. The treatment of these shows from Nickelodeon was completely unfair. For example, True Jackson VP. Nickelodeon hasn't acknowledged that show since 2011 until Kiki Palmer, the main star, started co-hosting Good Morning America in 2019, as well as hosting the VMAs in 2020 and now co-hosting The Real. Kiki Palmer's name is everywhere, so now Nickelodeon started to acknowledge True Jackson VP, but it was definitely treated unfairly. But there has been rumors of a reboot of that show, so what do you guys think? Would you watch that show? Because I, I don't know, I feel like I would totally give it another round, but I also like... Nickelodeon, like, oh, they gotta clean up their act. The favoritism of Dan Schneider's shows are transparent. In 2011, they were going to have a block at one point where they featured a bunch of shows from the 90s, throwbacks to all those TV shows we were talking about in the beginning of this episode, where they would literally, like, rerun a show once and maybe that's it. But when it went down in 2011, a lot of fans realized that there was a lack of flavor because Dan Schneider's shows were being rerun over and over again. They were constantly playing all that and Keenan and Kel, which are two of Dan Schneider's shows and two shows I really needed to talk about at some point because there are some horror stories from that set because Dan Schneider early on, he was a savage, especially the way that he treated some of these young actors and actresses. But let's talk a little bit more about these TV blocks because the non-Dan Schneider shows on these blocks would only air on special occasions or would be on for a month and then they would take it off. Despite Clarissa Explains It All and Hey Dude and many other TV shows being the top TV shows back in the day during their time, Nickelodeon would only include them for a little bit and then they would just fall off. They were treated as not equals with these block. The block tried to revamp itself as The Splat back in 2015 and put on more obscure Nickelodeon shows that only come on once in a while, like Welcome Freshman and do that on television, which again, shows I've never heard about. However, shows like The Amanda Show and all that ended up taking over the blocks and Dan Schneider, once again, was favorited over everyone else. I mean, let's take a look at some of these schedules from Teen Nick. 
You guys can see there is tons of Henry Danger, which I'll be talking about soon. A lot of iCarly, so much Victorious. It's all Dan Schneider. Like, where is True Jackson VP? Here's another schedule. So much iCarly, so many Game Shakers, which is like the worst show, but there's no big time rush at all. All of these throwback shows, even all that, but no Big Time Rush or True Jackson. There are also shows like the Naked Brother Band, which was really popular and not being shown. There's so much Henry Danger. Oh my gosh. Maybe that's my sign right now to go and cover Henry Danger because some of the things that I've seen that you guys have sent me is crazy. But if you guys have anything you want me to talk about relating to Nickelodeon, definitely email me at sloanwellknown at gmail.com or you can reach out to my friend Obscure Nick. She is always open to talk to people, especially those who have gone through terrible things with Nickelodeon and want a safe space to open up to. She is that girl, so definitely reach out to her. But wow, Nickelodeon definitely favorites Dan Schneider, and there's a reason why. Are they trying to send us these messages as children to make us, like, just gross human beings? I don't know, but I definitely feel like this situation is off, and I feel like this type of favoritism probably led to a downfall at Nickelodeon, because they put so much money and resources towards these television shows and nowadays people are like ew what was Nickelodeon doing and at the same time they have some shows some shows like Avatar like I must admit I love Avatar those shows are okay but they don't put the same type of energy that they did behind Dan Schneider's shows so what was it did Dan Schneider have a weird relationship with Nickelodeon or was Dan Schneider fulfilling fantasies of gross execs at Nickelodeon who wanted to see some of this stuff play out on on camera. There is still so much to dive into when it comes to Dan Schneider. So if you guys have anything else you want me to talk about, let me know. I actually have some exclusive pictures to show you guys from when he was in high school. Literally, you have to like go and pay for these pictures, but here's Dan Schneider in high school. He was actually voted class president at one point, so I guess he was likable, but um, I do have a video about Dan Schneider's history and where he came from and about his marriage and all that. So I will link those below and let me know what you guys want me to talk about next. At the end of my videos, I usually open up a P.O. Box item and I have this one package from Erica Gordilio in California. Hopefully I'm saying your last name right, Gordilio. G-O-R-D-I-L-L-O, -L -L and she is in California, and, oh, I'm so excited to open this. I don't know what it is, because sometimes I get, like, packages with Amazon packaging. Sometimes I get, like, some design on the outside. This one's very secret, so I'm like, I hope there's nothing living inside of this. I got a really nice um, letter opener recently, so this has been so helpful. I just really don't want to, like, stab myself with it, because it is very sharp. So let's see what's going on here, Erica. Oh, my gosh. It is so nice that you sent me something. Oh, it looks like it has those peanuts. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. <gasps> wow, uh, a little like alcohol wipe. What is this for? Hmm, okay, wait, there's a card. Okay, let's get into it. Wow. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is a sticker, SL04N. <gasps> That's awesome. It's kind of like reflective. That's really cool. Oh my gosh. Imagine if I put this on my car. Oh, thank you so much. Where's the letter at? Okay. Hi Sloan. Just wanted to drop by and let you know that I love what you do and you are an angel. Thank you for using your platform for good. We need more YouTubers like you. Aw. I sent you some herbal skincare that I make myself. I hope you love it. It's so, so good for your skin. Follow me on IG underscore earthy underscore. Wow. <gasps> thank you so much, Erica. I like, I've been really needing skincare products recently because I literally only use Vaseline and here is her I don't want to like put her phone number up here but her name is Erica G and it looks like her Instagram is underscore earthy u-r-t-h-y underscore oh so cute she does have like a little skin thing maybe that would work through the can you imagine if that worked through the system okay whoa there's so much in here I'm so excited because I really was going to buy some stuff recently and I was like you know what I don't want to spend all my money on this stuff and like now look at it so this is some oh luxurious facial oil wow and it's got like some rose in it guys rose is my favorite scent ever so I'm already so excited about that wow and then oh, herbal mist okay so it looks like this is for oh just kind of like spray it on your skin and it's got some benefits let's go ahead oh my gosh oh my gosh stop stop this is so good 
Oh my gosh, this one's amazing. This one right here, the Herbal Mist. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in here. You did not have to give me this much, Erica. So let's see, oh my gosh, is this a little jade roller? <gasps> I wonder if you, you must have a store. She definitely has a store, so I'll link something below because you've got so many great things here. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted one of these. Wow, oh, it feels so cold right now too. Ooh, I think it's just so cold in my apartment. <gasps> wow, thank you so much for this. I'm so excited. Can't you put it in the fridge and stuff? I, I'm not like the most skincare person, so <gasps> that's so exciting. Oh my gosh, and then you got me some bath salt, some Spiritual bath soak. <gasps> wow, you just pour it into your bath. Oh, I've been wanting a really hot bath lately, and I will definitely use these, Erica. Whoa, these are like <gasps> legit. I need to, I like, I'm like trying to smell them, but I know they're sealed, so maybe I should like, oh my gosh. I just tear that little bit, and it already smells the whole room. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. This smells really amazing. The scent is, I'm all here for the scent of it all. What's this one? Ooh, a coffee facial scrub. Our caffeinated jelly formula will awaken and cool your skin. I'm actually allergic to coffee, like on on my, um inside my body. So I don't know if I'm, I don't believe I'm skin allergic because usually you get tested for both, right? I don't know, but maybe I could use it as a product and not, um, Ooh, let's see, and not consume it, you know? Gosh, your stuff is legit. Like, this is a legitimate store, guys. Like, what is going on here? <gasps> wow. And it's like really dark coffee. It actually smells really good. For someone like me who does not consume coffee, that smells amazing. And it's like a jelly kind of like uh, consistency. So I guess it's more of like a, a moment to like massage and wake up your face with it. Oh my God, I feel like, I feel so bougie right now. Let's go back to this wipe thing. Cause I don't, are these like, I don't know what these things are. What is this thing where you have like the stick? Are you supposed to do this and just like hold it on there? I don't, I'm not too good with this one. So maybe you guys will have to let me know what I do with this little pouch right here. I'm like looking at the note like, hmm, does it have instructions? I'm not too sure. And then finally, what is this girl? <gasps> Wait, what is this? Is this more notes? Oh my gosh, instructions? Yes. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna read this one off camera because I think this one is for, um, for me personally. So thank you, Erica. I'm excited. That's such a sweet note. I'm like, I can't help myself but read it right now. Oh my gosh, and you gave me this little like reminder card. Um, too slow with love. Oh wow. The oh with the little wand thing. What is this? Um oh it's like a <gasps> solenite wand. So like a stone for oh meditation and stuff. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm gonna keep this forever, but I also need to see what's going on with this thing. <gasps> what is going on? <gasps> oh my gosh, I already feel like Lord, this is beautiful. Hello, but it needs to be more like this, right? <gasps> Imagine something happened right now, like some light would come through. I kind of feel like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful, Erica. Wow, thank you so much. Like, this is such nice products, too. And, like, uh, I just, I feel so grateful for this. Like, oh my gosh. I love the smell of this stuff. I'm definitely going to link her store below. So definitely, guys, go check it out. And thank you for being such a kind and loving person. Like, uh, you're talking about Maxi. Like, I can't, I told you guys, I can't help but read the note, like, right away. You are, like, literally my new friend. Thank you so much for such wonderful letters and such great products, Erica. I really appreciate that. And um, I'm going to link everything below. I cannot wait to use this stuff. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye, guys.